it shall see from paper rock to studio and it's almost my birthday my birthday's tomorrow so i wanted to share uh, a piece of art with you that i made today i actually started the background during the live stream yesterday because we are doing something over in the art joy of sharing art community it is going to be a collaborative art project amongst anyone in the group who wants to play along and it starts well, we, we gave everybody a head start to make some backgrounds. Um, backgrounds are just like, you know, layered things that someone else might want to use and collaborate with you in taking your background and creating art with it. And that's what we're doing. It's called hashtag AJOS journey. If you want to participate in that, you can join the group if you haven't already. Link will be below the video and you can make a background or scan or take a photo of one you already have made and then upload it into the painty papers or painted papers uh, file in Art Joy of Sharing. And then someone else can download it, print it and use it for our hashtag AJOS journey. And then of course, share that art that they made. So that's what we're doing for April. And so yesterday we were making backgrounds and since I am doing the 100 day project, I made this collage background um, while, you know, at the very beginning of the show. And then I went on to make some other backgrounds. But this first part is from the show. That's how come it's like a different camera and it's far away and it's filmed with my phone. But I'm just using a five by seven canvas panel and collaging on some cool stuff that I found in my stash. These first bits are just paper that's either been gel printed or stenciled or painted on. And then this other one on the left hand side is actually alcohol ink on a plastic bag like that you get your groceries, a white thin plastic piece. And it's got alcohol ink through a stencil on it. And it's pretty cool. Um, I did notice that the alcohol ink was coming off a little bit as I was collaging and you'll see it kind of tinted the tip of my collage brush pink and sort of spread the pink around a little bit, which I didn't mind. I didn't press down on it a whole lot. Um, I just got enough of the bubbles out. You know, I've got the bubbles out of it and, and didn't like really rub over the top of it. <clears throat> I am using a distress collage brush. This is from the Ranger company, Tim Holtz. And I bought a new pack of three that has the wider, the medium, and the narrow. And this is the narrow one. And I think it's the narrow one. I'm pretty sure it is. Might be the medium one. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I have more dress distressed collage brushes now than I had before. That other one is looking really nasty. Um, the whole handle of it is completely covered with medium. Uh, this is Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. And... I am just gluing some papers on and having fun with that. And then I'm gonna leave this to dry overnight. I also scanned this one and as well as the other one, other ones that I made and I put them in the folder over in the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community. And you can come over there, share your art and participate in our, our worldwide art collaborative project hashtag AJOS journey. So don't forget about that. It's technically starting on the 1st of April and there will be a hop with some of our um, art joy of sharing artists that participate in the hops and are in our group supporting what's going on over there, all the sharing stuff that we want to do. So you can watch for the hop on the 1st and you can also participate by joining the group. So now that this thing was all dry, I decided to do some collage over the top, like I said, my birthday. And I'm going to be making for my birthday a meal. Um, we're staying in, can't go out because the pandemic. So I'm celebrating with the people who live in my household. And uh, so I'm going to be cooking and we're gonna have a, a mid or late afternoon um, celebration and I'm going to be making a German chocolate cake because that is one of my favorites. Sometimes I make a chocolate mousse cake. Um, this time I'm going to make German chocolate cake and that is a, a dark chocolate cake with 
a filling of coconut and pecan frosting cooked with condensed milk and, and um, it's kind of like a caramel only it has a lot of coconut and pecans on it it's really nice tasting and then um, I'm going to put chocolate I'm going to put chocolate cream cheese frosting or else dark chocolate frosting for the frosting part so it'll have a filling and a frosting I think I'm probably just going to make a cake and not cupcakes but I could do cupcakes instead and had actually thought about that I like to make cupcakes and then core out the center and put a filling down inside. So I might do that. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. So it could be exactly something like this, or it might be just a whole cake, which might take less time. I'm also going to make my mom's recipe of spaghetti that has uh, Italian sausage in it and garlic bread and uh, green salad with blue cheese dressing. That's going to be what we're going to have for my birthday. So I'm making a cupcake in collage to celebrate. And I really loved that colorful pink and yellow and orange background. I thought it was perfect for this. I had some pieces of, of uh, this is deli paper, and they were in big sheets. And the paint on there has been scraped onto it. I was doing an underpainting for a project. Uh, in these colors and I don't I don't like to waste paint I don't like to throw it away so I usually just scrape it off onto something and I had a couple pieces of deli paper and I just scraped the paint that I was using for the underpainting onto the paper and let it dry and then it becomes collage paper right and it and when you scrape it with some type of a, a straight edge scraper I have a plastic scraper and I just it does give some texture because it, you get thick spots and thin spots and since the paint was on a palette I might pick up a little bit of of the white or something else with the color because you know the scrapers big and the palette small so I get I get a lot of blends that way and so this paper might seem slightly boring but <laughs> it works perfect for making frosting Maybe it would have been more fun if it was more of a more of a patterned paper, but I wanted to make sure that you could tell it was a chocolate cupcake. Chocolate is my favorite. I love chocolate. I don't think I'm the only one. <laughs> I know a lot of people do, but I have encountered some people who do not like chocolate, which every time I encounter someone it surprises me. I'm like, really? You don't like chocolate? Really? <laughs> How strange. Actually, my best friend only likes dark chocolate, and she doesn't even like that kind very much. She's not a chocolate fan. So I'll eat all of her chocolate. How do you like that? So I'm just cutting and tearing um, back and forth and using these different colors of browns to create my swirl. It's a piped swirl of frosting. I probably would make mine quite that high. I would probably only make it maybe three rings around and then a swoop because you, you want your cupcake, your cake to frosting ratio to be balanced. You don't want to go crazy with the frosting. That's one thing that I notice if I've ever been to a shop that sells cupcakes. Um, I really haven't been there that much, but every time they look so pretty, you know, they really look pretty in the case, but then when you actually have one, there's too much frosting so you have to like only eat half the frosting to go with the, the cake to balance it because otherwise it's just too sweet unless you like frosting and maybe you just want to eat all the frosting and just not eat the cake at all <laughs> um, I think that uh, maybe some of my kids would have been that way when they were younger because the frosting was the good part now it's more the cake is the good part it's kind of funny how that changes so after I, um, and by the way, I drew my cupcake onto a piece of thin paper and I thought it was deli paper. It ended up being um, tissue paper, which is not what you need for this. It's, it's way too flimsy. I guess I had had some tissue paper cut up for gel printing or something. I'm not sure, but it ended up not to be the right kind of paper at all. So I would not recommend it. But I usually will draw something on a thin paper and then collage and then cut it. If I'm going to do cut collage, I'll cut it out. So 
uh, that's what I was planning on doing because then that way you get the pattern and you and it doesn't matter that that thin piece of paper is under there. But tissue paper, not a good choice, not at all. So I'm using a glue stick instead of medium to glue all my pieces together on this piece. And I wanted there to be a little bit of a highlight around the top of the cupcake uh, liner so that you can differentiate between the cake and the cupcake liner and the frosting. I wanted the cake part to be really dark. So I ended up cutting the cake part with the zigzag like you have on the top of a cupcake liner and then adding another little thin piece of, of rice paper, a little scrap of rice paper and cutting another zigzag zigzag along the same pattern to get that white edge. And then I'm gonna glue that over the top of the blue and now it looks like that zigzaggy pointy edge that you get on the edge of a cupcake liner if you use one. So I thought that was a good plan. And then um, I tried to use different browns and use like kind of make shadows with the darker brown going up to the lighter brown on the frosting. And now I'm going to glue this whole thing to the board using the Liquitex matte gel medium. So I glued all the little pieces on with a glue stick this morning because I just didn't want to get all gluey. <laughs> And, but I knew that all of that was going to be sealed between the matte medium on the, on the surface of the canvas, also the matte medium on the back of the piece, also the matte medium over the top of the piece. So everything is sealed in and pressed down. It's, it's not an issue that I glued it together with a glue stick. It just kept it in place until I could, you know, press everything into the actual professional medium and now it's all sealed down in there. I'm also making a little bit of a blue shadow at the bottom with some uh, light blue gingham tissue paper scrap that I had just to make a little bit of a shadow where it looks like maybe the light's coming from the left hand side and shining down um, across and making a little bit more dimension. I end up filling that up a little bit later. But I did want to put my um, little bits of toasted pecan and coconut as a sprinkle on top of the cake. So I took uh, some, some painted paper that had a light, uh, a very light yellow, some painted paper that had some kind of mustard yellow, and then a dark piece, a dark scrap. And I just cut them in little, a couple little strips and then just, just cut, 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 cut across and made little bits. And then I put some matte medium on and I'm taking a pokey tool and I put a little bit of the matte medium on the pokey tool and it helps me pick up those little pieces and place them onto the top of the cupcake so that it has the sprinkles, which I am planning on putting on my actual cake when I make it. I'm going to make it tomorrow. So I already did the shopping and got all the stuff. I have all the stuff. I'm ready. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. So then, of course, I go after they're stuck into the wet matte medium, I go over the top with the brush and make sure that they're, they're stuck down, they're pushed down with the, with the bristles of the brush and then also gone over the top with the medium to make sure everything is good and stuck. I want it to be good and stuck. So this is number 41 of the 100 Day Project. So we're getting close to the middle of the project and still trying to work hard at it. I did take a piece of um, baby wipe and press everything down too and kind of maybe sop up a little bit of the matte medium because I wanted it to dry quickly. But everything is stuck down and, and I dried it with my heat tool to make sure everyone everything is really sealed in there. I am going to spray this um, with some spray varnish as well when when I get done with this video I'll take it outside and spray it so the next thing I did was to pull out some fabric castell pit artist pins these are India ink inside of a pin with a felt tip and you have a couple seconds in which you can blend this and the way that I like to blend it to make my shadows is to use a water tank brush 
So I draw on a section of the shadow, I blend it with the water tank brush, and then I go on and do another section um, to get my shadows around my collage piece so that it really makes it more integrated into the canvas. I want it to be um, part of the composition and not something that looks like it's been stuck on like a sticker. So I always make the shadows and the highlights on my collage pieces because yeah, I want it I want it to look cohesive and look nice. I also use pink on one side and a yellow orange on the other side and then some other darker orange and then blue across the bottom all around the outside edge of the piece of the cupcake to really get it good and integrated. And then I'm going to do highlights with this Arteza fine tip acrylic paint pen. Um, I bought, I got these recently, 10, 10 white ones and 10 black ones in a package together from the Arteza company. And they're the fine tips. So the other Arteza acrylic paint pens that I had were had two Fata tips. And I use them for some things like painting and things like that, but I don't use them for this type of a project because I think the tips are too fat. But these new little skinny tip ones are great. They're great. So I've been using, using them because I have them out. So I added some white highlights, um, kind of deepening and expanding that shadow. Uh, I end up even doing it a little bit more with some gel stick. I got out these King Art gel sticks just to kind of, so so the paper was kind of in a grid pattern, sort of. There was lines, and I wanted to kind of blend out the lines a little bit and make the background a little bit more, uh, I don't know, cohesive, I guess. So I used the gel sticks for that and blended them with my finger. And then I came in with some titanium white and a stencil that has dots, dot, dot, dots, and added a few little white dots in the background because it's a celebration. It's a birthday celebration. It's confetti, right? Um, something that did happen off camera was I did add a little bit of iridescent glitter glue to the sprinkles. So you'll see that in the photos, which, is our, which are coming up next. I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question. Share, subscribe, all those things. That helps my channel grow. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.